Hey everybody, Gurmy's Coaster Yard here with another episode of Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. And in this episode, we are going to be surrounding the main portion of our launched family roller coaster with a show building. Um, now, for anybody who may not know, a show building is basically what it sounds like um, in the context of an amusement park ride. It's just the building in which the ride takes place. So, in a lot of rides, let's take the Haunted Mansion at Disney World, or Disneyland, for example. Um, the, what you see, the mansion you see, is just a facade. And there's not any, or, or very little, of the ride experience takes place in there. Technically, I think it's zero, but aside from where you enter and everything, none of the ride takes place in there. So, the show building is basically... In many, or in many situations is behind the scenes and it's, it's what we would call the actual building where the ride takes place. And that's what we're doing here. Of course, as I mentioned before, this building itself is not going to be behind the scenes, but hopefully we can get creative to help it blend in. And you can see already how we started doing that, or later in this episode you'll be able to see. But here you can see where I'm fixing the first little scene before that ride really starts. Um, I moved the mummy animatronic in one block to change the back wall and you can see how I was able to add that white wall in there where the other one was. And I took this time to change up the actual mummy scene itself. So I added some more pillars and just made some adjustments to make it work better based on the changes. And you can see I also built bridges across the pathway that continue with that modern looking style. And here we are making an adjustment. Okay, so you can see I placed a, um, I believe that's the scaffolding piece from the colored wall set. Um, and basically what I'm doing here is creating um, a set of girders for the ceiling of our show building and here you see me creating pardon me I have a cold you can see me creating one piece that I'm going to save you'll see how I do it if if you've played any amount of roller coaster tycoon 3 you're probably aware of the ability to save scenery items in groups and then basically it's like copy pasting a little more involved than actual actually copy and pasting something but in essence that's what we're doing and you can see me saving it right there and in just a moment if I can find it on here actually I think I didn't save it properly this first time but you'll see we're going to copy and then paste that all across the roof as I'm doing right here and you also saw me going to the spot of the roller coaster with the maximum height and making sure there was a little bit of clearance. That happened a little bit ago, but it looks like the piece I used uh, might have, might still be there. I don't remember. <laughs> Not that it matters for the sake of this monologue. And along here, you can see where I created um, a pillar piece to bas basically support structure on the inside. Um, so this is what's holding the overhead structure up. Now this one I'm going to do the same thing where I copy and paste it and I found some various spots where they fit along there. Now one thing you just saw roll along the bottom of the screen and this is the biggest mistake I made in this episode and one of the biggest mistakes you can make at all. But if you are building a indoor spaghetti bowl type roller coaster that just refers to all that track being in a compact space. And you're going to put any amount of theming in there um, with scenery or with scenery items or wall items. You, It is in your best interest to put all that in there before you build any sort of show structure. And I apologize in advance because this time lapse is going to be a lot shakier as I try to maneuver the camera within the constraints of four walls and a ceiling. Luckily, I did not put the roof 
on the building until afterward. So it was not a complete failure. Um, but I definitely could have done better. And this is a learning experience. I was eager to complete the show building before I really decided, you know, yeah, I'm going to really go all in with the scenery in there. And the other issue that resulted from this mistake was when I, it really restricted my ability to place scenery items and set pieces within the building. Um, just based on the limitations of the camera, it made it difficult to work my way around in the building and find spots where items will work. And you'll see a lot of this timeline is me just experimenting over and over and trying to brute force the final product, if that makes sense. Um, right here, here's another tip for you. is, And you can see me getting rid of the walls here. That's because... I, in the end, I lowered the height of the ceiling. And it looks like, my, like I'm working on a little bit of interior scenery first. But I lowered the height of that ceiling. And in the end, um, basically I did that because you don't need, let's say, this is an arbitrary number, but you don't need a 50-foot ceiling to house a 10-foot structure. So you don't have to make the height of the ceiling variable in every single tile because that would be for a host of reasons that just wouldn't make sense. But um, where there's a large section of track um, where it's low to the ground, you can definitely bring down the ceiling to an appropriate height. And right in there, that, that track space is also narrower. So you see that I... I bordered the walls as close as I could to the bulk of the structure, and then where it narrows, the walls are also narrower, if that makes sense. I hope it does. Anyhow, here's where you can see me experimenting with scenery items. And it, some issues, the, the issue I mentioned where it's trial and error, in this case, like it's not difficult. You're, whether you build the building or not, Putting this pillar there is just about finding the right spot relative to the track. Uh, but you'll see in other areas where it was a struggle to find the right spot for things based on the track, but really based on the constricted camera movements. And here's another thing you're going to see me do often in this series, is placing catwalks and eventually handrails where there are launch sections or brake runs. I'm even going to show you if we do an outdoor steel roller coaster, which hopefully we'll get to, um, how you can, in Vanilla Roller Coaster Tycoon, put handrails up the side of your lift hill. Now, unfortunately, there is no way that I know of without really doing hack, the like, cheating or exploiting glitches um, to put catwalks on your lift hills if they don't have them already. Um, but you can do handrails, and I'll show you that. Um, and you can see me doing handrails here. I'm just going into the fence menu and picking the scaffolding fence. I find that works great. And I always go two layers high with that on my catwalks. If I do lift holes, I go three layers high. But we'll cover that in another episode down the line. And you can see it, it's a really simple way to make a nice looking catwalk along straight track. Or straight par portions of track. And it definitely, I think it looks realistic enough to um to i mean it gets the message across quite easily and i think uh it's something you don't really see often in people's roller coaster tycoon worlds uh understandably so because it's one of those things where unless you know how those pieces work like the office roof piece it can phase through virtually um any other scenery piece or track piece, it can intersect with them. So you can use that to get it really close at a quote-unquote catwalk level, we'll say. Um, with the track, not that you should ever actually intersect it with your track pieces, though, because that wouldn't happen in real life. So, like, you wouldn't see a track phasing through a wall because the ride would crash into it, if that makes sense. Um... But that's just me rambling. So more along the lines of scenery items. Here you can see me placing a giant ant. My idea for this ride is that 
since you're sort of traveling through the dark, it's almost like you're in the underworld or in this weird alternate dimension and there's like giant bugs and things that'll freak you out. Over here, you see me messing with the scorpion, but that ends up being this spider that I'm placing in here. And I wanted to get it at an appropriate height level so that way it's not difficult to see from the ride. If it's too low, the, the riders would have to crank their necks down to look at it. But you want it to be like visible without people having to look for it so that way you still have that element of surprise and then on the side where it's visible to the riders i just added those staircase pieces just to make it look just to make the girder holding it up look nice and here i'm finishing off the walls where you sort of enter the show building that way the um, spider is not visible until the end of the ride. It, it hides the spider from that part of, from the earlier part of the ride before the launch. Um, and I'll do a little bit more to mask that too, that you'll see in a little bit. And here, this is another piece that I think is great to use. If you go into the Western scenery, you can put a, get that staircase. Um, it's not anything super realistic and terms of the real world but for the sake of roller coaster tycoon 3 it adds a nice bit of detail so you can see here where i am placing that along the going up to the to the catwalks and at the ends of the launch track and if you alternate it by 180 degrees and then place it one lower like i did it really does look like a spiral staircase whenever i do this um just to add to the realism of it not that this is how they would look but within the game i guess to add architectural realism you could say and i always go with a the scaffolding pieces up along the sides of it just to look like it has some structure and to help mask the the pieces of wood sticking out that aren't quite right <laughs> if that makes sense so you can see me doing that here for both of the catwalks Relatively straightforward, not a whole lot to explain otherwise. And here where that ant got, where I put the ant in, you can see me creating another girder that looks like it would be holding it up. Um, obviously, you do the best you can with what you have, especially when it comes to games like Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, where what you have is very limiting. Um, and that's always been my goal in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 is to find solutions based on the, the restrictions or the constrictive nature of the game. And here I'm just adjusting the handrail so that way there's a platform where they can get to that staircase. You'll notice I used it, one of the support girders for the entire building for that staircase um, because it was right next to the brake run. And I wouldn't have to build another one. And here I'm trying to figure out a way to light up that ant so in the dark um, it's visible. The solution I had, um, I know I actually have not done a POV, like I've not in the game gone through the ride when it's dark to see how the lighting looks from the perspective of the, perspective of the ride. Um, also you can see me real quick here. I put that support column in the wrong spot so i just moved it back to a spot that i thought made more sense anyway i've not gone through and figured that out but you can see i put the light right there so the ant will end up being sort of backlit that was the best i could do to get a light near the ant um, but i think that's just one of those compromises we're gonna have to make and i believe right here is the final scenery or scenic element we put into the ride um, but you're going to see where I build just a sort of wall that you'll come up upon going through that brake run and then you're going to duck under it instead of going through the door. Um, just something simple and something fun. Nothing too crazy. Um, and right here I started to build it up with, I basically added three dimensions to the support structure. Um, but you can see with the loop there, the um, inclined loop, it didn't quite work out. So I ended up just going with a flat structure. 
and I left some of the perpendicular supports down towards the bottom just to make it make more sense. And here's where I finished masking the um, track piece. Actually, that was really simple. I just added a couple black wall pieces just to, con to help mask the spider further. <coughs> and here I'm masking those pillars from another portion of the ride. This is not really necessary. Um, in fact, I, I'm almost inclined to say don't bother doing it, but it's, it's really completely optional. If you want to go to this amount of detail for something so minute and you'll even if if you are like a big roller coaster fan if you're familiar with like the lights on pov of rock and roller coaster at hollywood studios you would realize like the different elements that get lit up there they they put spotlights on the scene elements they want you to see and then once you pass them they turn spotlights off so they don't even have to worry about masking. So the masking I was doing there was more or less um, me trying to do what I could in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 to hide those elements when I don't want them to be seen. But ultimately, that's not something that you have to worry about a whole lot. That's just something I'm doing for my own sake, if that makes sense. And finally here you can see me starting the roof section of the building. Um, if you guys have any more suggestions for scenery, definitely let me know. I don't know if I'll be able to fit anything in there, but I would definitely like to get one or two more show pieces in there. So here I'm using that same copy and paste method. And you'll notice I put two layers on the roof. I did a black layer for the ceiling. And then for the roof itself, I did a typical light gray color. And that way, from inside, the environment still feels dark. Um, obviously, shadows and lighting don't work like they do in the real world within Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. So you do the best you can um, with what you've got. That sort of is the theme of this episode, I'm realizing. Um, but yeah, having black walls and a black ceiling just it helps. It's a, that whole concept of masking again it helps the eye gravitate towards the things you do want people to see and away from the things you don't want them to see and here we're completing the show building um or not the show building but the uh narrower section of the building and here you can see me putting up a facade to sort of blend into those bridges so it seems as if the museum may be continuing over to that side um, but one observation i made when this was all said and done was this the pieces I used um, I changed the building structure I believe I used the London wall pieces instead of the I can't remember what they're called forgive me um, but I changed the look of the building slightly and I think this will help gradually shift the theme from a modern to a futuristic basically the ones I used have more glass and less brickwork, but I did use a little brickwork in those indentations just to keep the aesthetic of the building continuing onto the other side of the path, if that makes sense. So here you can see what I mean, where these are just big glass walls. They don't have any bricks up and down the sides. They're definitely a step further on like the architectural timeline than the ones that came before them. Not that I'm an expert in architectural history, because even though I took a history of architecture class in college, uh, no, I'm not an expert in architectural history. So, <clears throat> anyway, you can just do, see me doing a little more experimentation here, um, but ultimately I leave it at the height it's at, and I hope you can see what I mean, where I think it looks like a step ahead in the timeline. And, like, if we put a future-themed world behind it, which we will, because that's my intention for the park, that this will feel like a natural transition. It'll feel like it could fit both worlds, if that makes sense. I think the primary thing, because it's still in that front entrance area, is that it does fit the look from that side. But when you'll see the futuristic looking buildings behind it, and even the show building, which we're going to cover in sort of a futuristic wrap, um, you definitely want 
um, everything that the eye can see to make sense in some level, or at least to look like it it works. So here I'm I'm starting this facade. I don't really finish the back side of it because I don't know how I'm gonna integrate it with the rest of the building. I may even use some of those little glass sections to put shops or something inside. I don't know yet. So I'm sort of leaving that open-ended, literally and figuratively, um, just so that way when it comes time to actually do the work on the future area and on the building, we will have options. And here you can see I am finishing the ceiling of that little smaller portion of the building and I will go through here and finish off the walls so everything looks good from both sides and I will finish off the roof and I'm surprised that I've managed to narrate for this long and I'm a little upset that I feel like I've run out of things to talk about um, with two minutes to go just about um, uh, yeah, I really don't know what else to say. But you can see me putting on this roof there. And in a moment, I guess here's something to talk about, even though it's small. Something small. But you'll see me put the air conditioner pieces on top of the main building. Very straightforward. Um, I'm not a building builder, an architect, I guess. Yeah, that's the word. So I don't really know how air conditioner units would work this is probably this may be more than you would need in a building but i usually try to put a realistic amount and to spread them out to make it look as if um the building could be cold from whatever angle okay so here is the pov of the ride which means i have a uh, i'm allowed to stop talking now and let you enjoy it and i'm gonna do that enjoy I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and I will see you guys in the next one. But until then, have a great day, and uh, yeah, bye-bye.